Hello and welcome to Herbal History. In this episode, we will cover the historical uses in medical and spice context of four species of cinnamon, also known as cassia. We will start with Chinese cassia. Cinnamon and cassia are among the oldest spices to reach Egypt in ancient times. This process dates back to the 17th century BC, although the type of cinnamon that entered Egypt was a different species than was used commonly today. It is probable that both Greek and Roman cities and states used cinnamon, but the Arab traders who dominated and controlled the spice market back in that time period kept their sources secret. In Vietnam, 2000 years ago, a spice trader paid tribute to a Chinese emperor, and among these were cassia bark. There are currently species found throughout the wild and in cultivation in Southeast Asia and South China, as well as Tropical Asia. Chinese cassia is amongst one of these species. It is known as cinnamon cassia. In ancient China, dried cassia bark was an important spice. The essential oil used by many individuals in ancient China, oleum cinnamon, was obtained by steam distillation from leaves and twigs and used as a flavoring agent in that time period. Bark collected from old trees were used as treatments for diarrhea, alongside other stomach maladies. It was said it is also good for perspiration and promoting blood circulation. It was also used to treat the symptoms of cold and as a mild pain reliever. It was also used to treat postpartum disorders, such as postpartum abdominal pain. This plant in a certain preparation called Quetam was also used in combination with other medications to treat heart disease. It was also used to treat impotence and sterility in males as one of the eight ingredient pills being sold at that time. I think all of us can think of an internet equivalent commonly seen in pop-up ads. Now on to the second cassia species, Cassia burmani, also known as the Indonesian cinnamon. This is one of the most studied species of cinnamon in this era. Although most of our cinnamon is derived from Chinese cassia, most of the efforts put into studying Indonesian cassia is in finding new chemicals with varying results. Some individuals have found cinnamon aldehyde, what makes cinnamon taste and smell like cinnamon, in specimens as high as 2%. Other reports indicate an 80 to 95% cinnamon aldehyde, and still others, using different distillation methods, have obtained 45 to 62% cinnamon aldehyde. They have, however, found other types of perfume scents in the bark for extraction purposes, such as saffron. Although not as common as Chinese cinnamon, it's still imported heavily to the US. Germany, and the Netherlands as a higher quality cinnamon. In 1992, the Research Institute for Spices and Medicinal Crops had initiated a large-scale breeding program to further improve the agronomic traits of Indonesian cinnamon. Now on to Indian cassia. Known botanically as cinnamon tamala, the leaves of these trees have a spice flavor that's very clove-like and a vaguely pepper-like Odor. People in northern India enjoy this crop as a flavoring agent and has been used extensively in flavoring many vegetarian and non vegetarian dishes and is treated roughly the same way that bay leaves are treated in Europe. In ancient times, Indian cassia, alongside another species of plant called Umbilica officialis, was used for tanning and dyeing leather. Indian cassia has also been historically used for hypoglycemic purposes. Indian traditional medicines also use Indian cassia as an ingredient for different medicines to treat colic, diarrhea, coughs, gonorrhea, rheumatism, irritated boils, conjunctivitis, and itching. It was also used as a substitute for betel leaf when they could not find it. The oil that is the active ingredient behind the scent, cassia lignia oil, has also been used to scent soaps, as well as create perfumes. Now on to the camphir tree. 
Before we talk about the camphor tree, we must talk about the chemical camphor. It's a chemical created initially from distilling the wood of the camphor tree. It's long been used for treating coughs, pain, and itching, and is currently FDA approved for that purpose as well. More modern uses include a softening agent for cellulose nitrate and as a means of repelling moths. Now that we have the context out of the way, let's get going. The camphor tree, also known as Cinnamon camphora, grows naturally in China, Japan, Taiwan, and some parts of Southeast Asia. It was later on introduced to Europe, possibly in the 17th century, and from there it was introduced to many other countries. Prior to World War I, Taiwan was a major producer of camphor. Due to lack of restrictions, the use of this plant eventually caused the camphor trees to dwindle in numbers. This led to plantations being established, initially in Taiwan and later in Japan. Japan had the ability to produce very efficient plantations and were able to produce 2,000 tons of camphor annually. During its heyday, the camphor industry was a government monopoly. But due to unrestricted use of this plant, the tree population dwindled very much, forcing the government to embark on a massive replanting program in the years following the Second World War. The way it worked was, the tree was chopped down, carved up into easily handleable pieces, put into a wood chipper, and then the wood chips were sent to a distillation plant, where through an efficient distillation process, camphor was generated. Due to the wide array of industrial uses for camphor, a synthetic process was later developed, and with this new process, camphor can now be synthesized from a more common chemical called pinene, also known as turpentine oil. Due to this cheap process, the United States and the UK could synthesize large quantities of camphor without need of the camphor tree. This caused the Japanese camphor industry to collapse Camphor has been historically used in ancient times as an aphrodisiac, as well as a fever slash inflammation treatment, as well as an insanity medicine, a medicine to prevent insanity, an anti-asthma medication, and a general treatment for various types of sexual dysfunctions. And although camphor is no longer used for its titular ingredient, there's still quite a few different types of essential oils that have a wide variety of chemicals for industrial use and still used heavily as an ornamental and forestry plant. So although the industry is not as great as it once was, it still exists. Well that about covers everything, see you in the next one.